My name is Lerner Tian. I'm 18 years old and I'm from Irvine, California. I thought that I would end up becoming a professional tennis player when I was a kid. Lerner's game, it's special. Like, he's a lot like better. He kind of glides on the court. He just has a, a natural ability to look graceful as he plays tennis. Growing up with my whole family playing, I just kind of thought it was normal. It's always been something that's consistent in kind of all of our lives. My name is Kong Tian. I'm Lerner's dad. My name is Huen. I'm Lerner's mom. I was born in Vietnam, raised in Riverside, now live in Irvine. We always thought of ourselves as being Chinese, living in Vietnam. I was born in 72, and that's during like a, a tumultuous time, what we call the Vietnam War. After the fall of Vietnam, everyone's always talking about coming to the U.S. We were probably more fortunate than most in the sense that we actually got on a plane, landed in, uh, in LAX. I always say he's a privilege when he came by plane, I came by boat, so we went at sea for about 10 days. And we, we met a lot of Thailand pirates, so we had a lot of really dramatic experiences, actually. Uh, you know, we basically saw, like, people dying. As a kid, I remember thinking, gosh, this is really exciting. We're going to go to America. This is the place. Everyone's talking about how great America is. This is, this is the one country you want to go to. Tennis kind of started our family. That's how my parents met. When I was in college, I got a job teaching tennis. I was teaching a, a, a night class for some adults. And literally, using the word literally correctly, bumped into her. And I think at the time, she was doing a paper. She needed to interview a male of like a, a certain age range or something. So she asked if I wanted to do it. I said, yeah, sure. Who knew she was just trying to get in? <laughs> we were both born in Vietnam. We share similar cultural backgrounds and we meet here on a tennis court. It is a small world and sometimes I say that's, that's the only reason our kids play. I think in Irvine there's just a lot of different people. I mean all my neighbors, they're, they're Chinese, Koreans, Vietnamese, uh, Indians. It's a very diverse place in terms of the residents, the food. I, I love it. I've been here all my life and I wouldn't want to be anywhere else. Even before we had kids, we had a group of friends, so we just always sort of played tennis recreationally. And once the kids came around, we just sort of continued with that. And then it became a family affair. My daughter always wanted to be her doubles partner. My daughter always wanted to be my doubles partner. And we would just play. It was a great time. I look back pretty fondly on those memories. I think it was really special having my mom as a teacher. I was homeschooled. So my schedule with tennis in school when I was younger, I think, is really, really unique. It's really dad who may learn and learn. I often say the right coach for your kid is the person that stays up at night thinking about your kid. But when they're young, that, that person is often the parent. I wanted to make sure that not only was I teaching them the right things and doing it in a way that wasn't going to make them hate it. Keep it up, keep it up. I don't care if it feels crazy. Learner's always been one of the top kids in his age group. I mean, I think he finished number one in 12s, 14s, 16s, and by the time he was 16, he was number one in the 18s. That one moved well. You were not stopping there. As I was progressing, I wasn't really thinking that much about pro tennis and when I would start. My goal in tennis was always just to kind of see how far I would, I would go. His famous line was, well, I'll just see how far I could go. Do, do you want to be a pro? Yeah, I'm going to see how far I can go. Learner, do you even like tennis <laughs> and he says yeah I'm gonna see how that's gonna go <laughs> and it was really strange but he was totally serious learners graduated high school at 16 what 16 year old really belongs in college not many of them do but you know what 16 year old belongs transitioning to professional tennis not many of them do as he's looking at these different colleges that summer when he started taking tennis seriously, it was like he was good before, but now he was getting really good. All of a sudden, I'm meeting with an agent, and maybe like a month later, he ended up winning Kalamazoo. And then now I'm getting calls from more agents. The year before, it was just like going to college. This year, it's, oh, maybe he doesn't go to college. It was a lot of back and forth, and eventually, I thought it was a good idea just to, you know, go to school for at least a semester, give myself some time to physically and mentally mature. It was a great situation where he was able to play like high-level juniors, plus play college, plus play men's, 
So as of now, he's basically played every event at every level. I love what I'm doing right now. When you enjoy it, it's easier to, to work harder, to go out there and play day in, day out. Looking back, I think it's really cool to see where I started and where I've come. I think I was a little naive when I was younger, thinking that I can just go out and be a professional tennis player, and then it ended up working out that way. He's really just at the beginning of his journey, so it's very exciting. Now, in the morning, he grabs his back, and it's like, he's going to work. It's neat. You know, as a parent, you're proud of what they've become. I've never really thought of what benchmarks I'd want to hit in my tennis career. I've always, from a young age, just wanted to see how far I could go. Obviously, winning Grand Slams, being number one in the world, is every kid's dream. Our family, we haven't been back to Vietnam since we left, but she and I, we always talk about going back. I talk to so many parents who always say, oh, I wish I could take my kids to a third world country so that they would understand how tough it is, so that when they come back to America, they can pick up their socks and stuff like that. Um, and, and I get that, but, but I would hope that if, if they went and came back, it would be more than that. It would be like, wow, gosh, my, my parents came from this impoverished country and you know, they, they made a life for us. They, they worked a certain way, they taught us certain things. We have all this and look how privileged we are. And now with that, what can we do to help other people? Until you truly help someone else, you haven't truly appreciated what you have.